Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Peter Gambole from the Kingdom of Esotini. Uh, I'm here to present on the MS shift uh, in the Kingdom of Eswatini. So, in Eswatini, uh, the MS, the, 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 formal, the formal unit was established in 2004, where we were having a, a standalone access-based system where we're having a standalone access-based system. So basically, uh, uh, the, the, most of the work previously was done by the Central Statistics Office for the education sector. Then after the introduction of the MS unit, uh, all the work that was done by the Central Statistics Office was then moved to the MS department. So, with support from UNICEF, UNESCO, it was established. So, in, if you can see the, the, green, the, 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 the green part there. So, the, this was our first questionnaire which was captured into the standalone system. That questionnaire, it didn't have a, a PIN, a personal identification number. So we used to, to have a serial number from the class registers. So it was difficult to, to follow up on certain students because it was just a serial number. So each and every year we have to capture uh, the, in, the, the, the individual learners and teachers each and every year. So it was uh, time consuming. So that's why uh, we then went to DHA, with the DHAS2 team, uh, we migrated to the pin driven system. So the, 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 the picture on, on the side with the red arrow, that's where we put the, the, the pin. So on the, on the one on top, it was the serial number. So the personal identification number is given by the Ministry of Home Affairs uh, during, during the, the registration of Maswati. Foreigners working in the country and refugees, so they all have this PIN. The PIN is, is, is issued as soon as the parents register children for birth certificates. So the PIN is, is used in health facilities, so now it's being, we are using it even on the education sector. So about 20% of the learners in the kingdom of Eswatini do not have PINs. Uh, so our, our country, it's, it's in South Africa. So that's why the challenge of learners with, with no PIN uh, it, it's a problem because the, the parents, they go to South Africa to get benefits so they, they don't necessarily require to, to, to get pins for their kids. So uh, when the child doesn't have the pin, we normally use the, 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 uh, an alternative pin for, for, for the parent or guardian or that document which we use as a substitute to the PIN, which is not there for that learner. So we have captured uh, all the learners into the DHIS2 platform in Eswatini. So in 2022, we made sure that all the learners are captured into the system. Uh, and now we are piloting the semis, the semis up in nine schools where we will do the attendance, the promotions, the transfers of the learners and teachers for those individual learners. The potentials for the system, uh, there is an effectiveness in management of the FPE grant. So in Eswatini, the accounts department normally 
pays the, 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 the free primary education grant, which is normally it's, it's costly to the, to, to the government because they have to pay those officers over time. So this DHIS2 system will minimize those costs to the government. So there will also be a, pon a potential learning m m material distribution with all info captured and updated regularly. School management by regional, by regional inspectors, implementation of ministry's policies will be monitored, especially the reputation policy, teaching period allocation. Effectiveness in government linkages with the Ministry of Home Affairs, Ministry of Health, the Deputy Prime Minister's Office through the pin-loaded profiles. Pupils can be linked with other systems based on the PIN and National Population Register. OVC tracking from primary, all attributes also captured guardian. This will inform distribution of OVC grants at secondary, at secondary schools by the Deputy Prime Minister's offices. Schools Health Service Providers, SRH, program to be improved and intervention can be easily monitored and reported. Account for every child registered in the population register. Dropout will be tracked and addressed. Data analysis of household surveys and EMIS can easily pinpoint out of school children. Challenges we have, the human resource. So the DHIS2 changed the scope and extend coverage of effectiveness. EMIS staff to perform more qualitative role and supervise the data from school through regional checks and ensure compliance and quality assurance. There is need to revisit the terms of references, uh, training, and salary structure for, for the MEs since uh, the work has changed. The, 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 now they won't be capturing only the data, so the, the salary structure needs to be revisited. Uh, support decentralization as they will provide update data and statistics for all regions. So now most of the work is being done at national level, so there is a need for decentralization. Regional inspectors uh, who monitor and assist schools and MEs, yet the TRR does, does not include that. Reimburse focal teachers for the extra work. Okay, we have focal teachers who who help us in managing the, the, the DHIS2 at school level. So they are the ones that are capturing the data into the, into the system, the focal teachers. So what's happening, these focal teachers, normally when we train them, they said, oh, now we are, we are having, we'll be having more work than, more added work into our work. So what are we going to get? Are you going to give us, to give us an extra uh, money or what? So we're still trying to figure out on what can be the motivation to those focal teachers that we have trained. More teachers need to be orientated on the system and the new data collection tools. Regular orientation of head teachers as some retire and are promoted. So we have to to do regular orientations on head teachers because sometimes the teachers retire and some are promoted from to, to, to other. The, our plan of action for 2024 and 2025. So 2022 learners has already been captured. Uh, we'll be doing the promotions and enrollments to 2024 on the SEMIS application. We need to train at least five class teachers per school. That will help the focal teacher in, promotion, in promoting the, the learners to, to the current year. Orientation of all schools principals, head teachers on DHIS2 for education.
training of regional inspectorate on accessing and using DHIS2 dashboards for planning and monitoring at regional level. Uh, we have to form a technical working group with the Ministry of Health, the Central Statistics Office, the Ministry of Home Affairs, the Deputy Prime Minister's Office, Ministry of Labor and Social Security, uh, so that we can see on how to, or, or on how we can minimize the, 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 the learners without pins, on uh, what, what extra, what, what can, can we really do to make sure that each and every learner in the country has, has a pin? Thank you. Thank you so much, Peter. And um, I think it goes without saying that we have been, as a community, really appreciative of the learning that we have gained from working closely with the Gambia and with Eswatini, because this EMA shift is still a discussion. It's still, what is it? What's the definition? How do we get there? Um, so to be able to work so closely with both countries to learn and to go in a stepwise manner has been quite, I think, powerful for all of us, but hopefully also for the rest of, rest of the community looking to improve EMIS across the world. And I think um, the reflection about EMIS staff having to perform a more qualitative role to get closer to schools, it's an interesting reflection. The job descriptions, the roles that we've had with the traditional EMIS are starting to shift and, and change. So I think with Eswatini and, and with the Gambia, we've also been reflecting about teacher training college level. Do our teachers know what kind of data they will be needing to report later on? Why will they need to use that data? So I think it opens up a very wide space for us to reflect on our teacher training colleges as well and all the different levels. How are we ensuring that there's skills development around understanding the power of data and why, why we use it? So with that, I really would like to open for a bit of Q&A or some comments. I don't know if anyone has some reflections because this is quite powerful to think of a, a personal identification number driven system that is um, administered from home affairs itself from birth and you're now able to follow a child no matter what service. It's quite a powerful um, aspect and quite impressive um, to think through. And then with the Gambia, this vision of the shift. Um, if there are any questions, comments, reflections from online at the Kicks community, please feel free to add it to the chat and we'll bring it into the room. But any questions or thoughts from the, the audience inside the room? I see uh, Kundwani has his hand up from University of Malawi. Um, yeah, thank you very much for uh, the wonderful presentations. As mentioned, I'm Kondwan Muntal from the University of Malawi, uh, but also part of the HISP University of Malawi. Um, I think they are insightful presentations, um, but um, I, I wanted to check on Eswatini. I think it's, it's interesting, really, that you can actually use the national identification number to be able to monitor what uh, the performance and everything else about the student. But um, I don't know how, um, what prevails in Eswatin. Are we certain that every parent would have a national ID? Um, because I think if the child doesn't have the national, I mean the ID, I think the fallback plan is that you can use the guardian. And the guardian is using, in, in, in my country, for example, you can actually find a good number of parents without the national ID. Is that a case, and how are you dealing with that particular situation? Thank you. Uh, okay, thank you for the question. For, for us in Eswatini, like uh, in the presentation Campbell mentioned, the personal identification number is used across board. So for you to have a bank account, you need the PIN. You get employment, they use the PIN to check you and pay you. You want a SIM card for communication, that PIN is also used. So mostly, um, 
mostly individuals do have the pain. But then we have the issues of uh, people living al along the South African border who, who would want to have a pin in South Africa because of some of the benefits they, they get from there. Uh, and that has an impact on the learner because that means when we disperse free primary education grants, that learner can't be provided for. Because for you to be able to access some of the benefits, health benefits, education benefits, you have to have the PIN. That creates accountability in the government. So that is the issue, and uh, it's an issue that we, we want to address, the social welfare in the Deputy Prime Minister office to address. So if we have this 20% of learners, we can easily forward that list to the social welfare to say this is a social welfare issue can you address it and work with the minister of home affairs to ensure that all the learners have that and then the fall back on the guardian or parent pin it will be a temporal it's a temporal thing for us to say can we follow up on this parent to ensure that the right of that child is not infringed because you want to benefit outside the the country's uh legislative yeah thank you any other questions it could also be comments right we are even from other countries we can hear like how you manage yeah. then prabhat and then okay thank you peter uh, just a question on the pilot of cms if you can share a little bit more on that across the nine schools is that uh, has that already happened and what was your experience So we are also, like the Gambia, piloting in nine schools. Um, I think uh, the enrollment is almost the same because we're, we're just a small country with one million population. So the coverage for us is in nine schools. And for now, because we started the pilot um, this year, the focus is on ensuring that all what Sidi was saying is that what is mostly important for the same is, is to have your line list, have all the learners registered into the system before you can even focus on attendance, before you can even focus on the performance. So for us, the main focus for now is ensuring that all the learners in those nine schools, they are registered and we know where they are, who they are, and where they stay, the parents, the subjects they are taking. And then we'll be moving, schools are closed right now, so the following weeks they'll be opening, and then we'll be moving from that to say we're looking at the attendance. It's still small scale, we're still at the beginning to see what is happening, but what is mostly important to, is to ensure that all the learners are registered and we can account for them in the school. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, actually, uh, did a very, very good presentation by uh, Mr. Peter and, the C and CD. Uh, it is very nice to hear that uh, you have already started piloting the semi step in your country. Uh, it's all about five, five schools. So um, my, uh, I have dip uh, different kind of questions. Uh, how we manage the uh, infrastructure side uh, in your application? Because it's uh, big data. You are collecting some kind of a big data. Uh, it's the one question. And uh, uh, this is from, uh, for CD. Uh, actually, uh, you have implemented VPN infrastructure uh, in, your con uh, in your data collection. Uh, actually, just uh, we know, need to know uh, how it's, uh, you are doing that in your country. Um, and another thing uh, I have to know, uh, there's a special uh, terms you used, uh, that is uh, stress test. Uh, is it a new one or a, it, that's not family with me? Just to explain. Stress test. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much for uh, that question. So maybe I start with the last one, that's the freshest one. So the, by stress test, um, we mean that um, the semis was jointly conceived 
by all the works that we've been doing in the Gambia, in Eswatini. And then we sat down as a whole, you know, his network, including Sri Lanka. Then we designed what a, a kind of um, semis that we believe was supposed to um, work in the schools. So, but the only way to confirm that is to really go through the semis, look at component by component, go to the schools and test these components individually and see how they work in the schools. So that is where, that's what I mean as stress test, as mean we really, you know, put in data, look at the functionality, look at the performance and look at whether it aligns with the processes at the school. Yes. So um, the other question was around the VPN infrastructure. Yeah, so we can talk about this uh, more in detail, but for short, the VPN infrastructure is like um, a toned down version of the internet. It allows you to only access a specific service. And in this service, we, uh, we are referring to the DHIS2 infrastructure, that is the, ser the server that is providing this access to the platform, to the tools, to the dashboards, to the mobile app services, everything is on one server, and that is where you allow the user, the schools, to connect to. And once the, um, the schools get connected to this VPN, it's not an open internet, so it's much, much cheaper, and it's much more protected because it's open, you cannot access it everywhere. And the schools can have 100%, you know, 24-hour access to all the services that is on the, on the internet. So for a low, you know, price of fee. So it's like a fraction of what it would have cost you to put on internet. But again, it also has its own technical challenges that we can also talk about in detail, but these are things that we can discuss later when we meet around. Yes, also, um, again, the infrastructure is very important. We talked about um, some of the requirements, and one of those requirements is the devices. And the ministry has taken up upon its responsibility to make sure that in its budget it has provided devices for, um, um, for, uh, for, the, for the schools. And for these two schools, and not only for these two schools, but for every other school. And it is, has to be planned, it has to be budgeted maybe, but these are things that they can plan in three years in advance. Maybe replace the computers every three years or every four years, and then we find other means of this thing happening. But these are all things, teaching things, that we need to figure out as we go. That's why it's very important to be pragmatic and to learn as you go and to make sure that you have sustainable you know, connections where you can keep this you know, stream going. Thank you. Uh, there's another question o online. Um, this is from Zahida Batol. Um, I think it's to the Eswatini team. Uh, you mentioned that um, the teachers were asking for extra money to manage now the data capturing process into the, into the system. So he's asking, isn't it part of the job description of the head teachers to manage the data of the students? Why are they asking for extra money? Okay. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yes, it's the job of the head teacher, but if we are saying the job, if we are moving from aggregate information to individual information, and we are, the head teacher can't be in every class collecting information for learners. So the class teacher has to do the job, or the MS vocal teacher has to coordinate that, and they, they have to be, they have to understand the need and the complexity of the information that is needed. So that is why they were saying that, because we're only at the beginning of the process, they felt like this is extra work for us, having to register every learner in the school, ensure that all the details that are needed are uploaded into the system. I think that's the reason, but moving forward, we are hoping that it will be just a norm to say this is what we do and we're not doing it on a registry or school registry or class registry. We're just doing it on the system. Maybe with time, it will ease into them as they are normal work. Good morning to you all. Thank you very much for your presentations. And uh, I want to know about the, what are the strategies do you follow to get in uh, data accuracy of uh, your ME system? And uh, we face a lot of problems in our schools and divisional level. I think my colleagues uh, 
supports me uh, because of uh, most of the data entry part is very uh, uh, getting time duration and uh, not accurate. What are the strategies do you follow in this system? Thank you. Uh, okay, thank you for that. That has been um, you know when you collect information, you tend to be to make it so routine that you are expected to fill in the form and you know that the form has it comes back to why the why we are collecting that information. So after the data quality assurance um, training we had uh, in December, we realized that even for us as MS officers, we, some of the questions we don't even understand why we're collecting it and who needs, to, who needs that kind of information. So we had to go back and train ourselves first to say that if this is the questionnaire that we're responding to and we're asking schools to respond to, who needs that information and why do they need that information? Then after our own in, in in-service training, that's what I'll call it. We then went to the schools, like we called all the focal teachers in the schools to go through each and every question, to say this question means this, and when you calculate or the indicators that are generated from this question are needed by so-and-so for that purpose or for that reason, then we got to understand. But honestly, uh, looking back, there are some of the questions that we will be like, why are we calling, collecting it? Who needs them? For what purpose? But after understanding that recently, now we know and we're hoping that the data that is coming in and the users that need that information would have at least valid information from the schools. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think this is in relation to our annual school census data. Um, that you are asking about. And I think um, one key approach that the Gambia has used since um, 2010 was we wanted, we've made sure that the forms are as simplified as, as possible. That's one key thing. If you want to ensure that the schools report, they need to know, like she said, they, this form has to be simple enough and they need to know what they are asking. So we have a form that is only five pages. So we try to condense whatever question that we need to ask to make sure it revolves around these this five pages. We don't ask more than five pages. And like Knut said, there are some information that you don't need to collect every year. It's not like every year the number of you know, um, um, classrooms are, are built. So you need to, some of those information, you need to separate them. There are some that are routine, that needs to come every year, some that needs to come um, every two years, or, or otherwise you collect it in other means. But the other thing is we also, because we don't apply um, data passes in the schools, we have what we call also data focal points. And we always make sure that this person is specifically trained in the school, even though they move. But at any moment in time, we have somebody identified as a data focal person in the schools that we work with directly. And these are people that we are in groups, WhatsApp groups, you know, we have a small team, but we spread ourselves across all the regional, you know, or district level groups. And we also have so uh, district, I think in this case, district level officers that we are work with, working with very, very closely. So these district level officers, in the case of the Gambia, we call them cluster level. So they have a group of schools that they routinely monitor. They go to the schools, they support them, they know what they are talking about. When the school says they need this kind of support, they are there to support the schools. So we pass this through system. We don't go directly to the school. We grow to the provincial, the district officer, the regional officer, that's the provincial officer and the officers. Then we go through this district level officers, that is the divisional level officers. Then they go to the school and support the school. So the first level of verification that we have in the Gambia is from that divisional level. They have a verification system, then we come and verify with this on the data, and then before we take, go back to school. So in a way, if you go to this divisional le uh, level, you understand, you will ensure that every school has reported, number one. If they have a challenge, they are there to support them to fix this. And, and make sure that the forms are simple to fill. So these are the, some of the key things, approaches that we are using to make sure that you know, data is routinely um, collected every year. Uh, 
Thank you so much for uh, both comprehensive presentations. Actually, it's given us a very, very good starting point. You noted on the list Malawi is one of those interested in EMIS. So we know where to start from. Uh, I would, however, love to learn from uh, the Gambia, the challenges. I know they were there, but maybe with time limitation. If possible, if you can just uh, brief us on the challenges. Yes, so um, I can tell you the challenges we are numerous. We have a lot of challenges. And for one, you know, in every school, they have a different configuration, they have a different setup, and they have um, different um, ways of organizing. So it's not, for example, in many of the schools that you go to, it's not, you don't, you don't find the same level of infrastructure, for example. You don't find the same level of um, buy-in from the head teachers. The head teachers, remember, you are designing for them. So the head teachers need to be on board, they need to be interested. And you find, you go to a school where the head teachers are of different loads, you know, you make sure that you don't put too much load on them. But the key thing is when you are digitizing for them, make sure that your design, at least the way that we are uh, doing it, we design for um, the schools. Even though when you, um, right now, when you are collecting attendance or registration, we, the teachers are, as, are like doing extra works, but the plan is to um, make sure that we have some kind of analytics that kind of take care of this uh, extra work that they do after marking the attendance. That is the close, they call it closing of register in the Gambia. That's the tallying that you need to do to see how many students are coming. It takes a lot of time. But these are some of the things that we are facing right now with the system, but some that we have already shared with the, with the group um, to, to, to deal with. And um, I know in my presentation, we talked about the, you know, the enable an environment. One of the key challenges that we have problem because we don't have any legal support, we don't have any legal background right now we are working with. So we can go to your school and they flatly refuse and say, no, we are not working, we are not working with you. And we are like, okay, it's fine. Because we are, we are allowed to collect aggregate data, heads, but we are not allowed by law to collect individual level information from, from the school. So we have a lot of other you know, issues that we can definitely talk about. And um, I know this, are, this is just one that I've mentioned, but again, we can go deeper in details on many of these issues.